What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, I got a CRPG for you. That's right, amid the, amidst the swaths of RPG influenced card based roguelites, we have, a, we have a CRPG. So you know, we swam, we kept our head above water, and now here we are. Now welcome back. Uh, we're checking out Adam RPG's sequel, Trudeau Grad. Adam RPG was pretty dope. If you never played it, I definitely recommend it. If you're a fan of like Fallout, or Baldur's Gate, or Stalker, or any of that kind of stuff, you will enjoy Adam RPG. It's a really fun game. So anyways, let's dive on in. We're going to check out the sequel, see if it's awesome. Right now the game is currently in development, so keep that in mind. But this is just a first little sneak peek taste. Uh, this guy's got a funny hat, so I'm going to take him. I was, you know, I could try to pick somebody else, but he's got a, he's got a, he's got a little, he's got a hat that is undersized for his head, and it just, it, it humorates me, and so I gotta do it. An experienced urban survivalist skilled in crafts and technology, Mikhail uses homemade weapons, especially silent ones, like crossbows, but he also likes knives, as long as there is peace and quiet on the battlefield. Can I make, like, a custom guy? Oh, I can make a custom guy. Well, let's make a custom guy, then. Custom guy sounds like fun. So we've got Piotr, we've got Taras, we've got Eugenia, we've got Zofia, Zolfia, Alfred. Okay, so we've got like a number of portraits that we can throw together here. I'm going to find somebody that looks like I identify with them. Oh, it's got to be Leonid. I mean, look at him. That's a man. He's giving you the eyeball right there. He's giving you, he's giving you the Tuco Salamanca right there. He's giving you the old lie detector. All right, so we can have two distinctions. Uh, we can be a sensei, which is martial arts. We can be a bloodthirsty ogre, uh, which means that they panic if they start out on the battlefield near you. Okay. Uh, we can have sexy beast. Apparently, it only works on the opposite gender, but hey, it makes them love us. We can be the lone genius. It's hard for us to learn from experience due to our crippling lack of empathy. So we get less XP and less talent, but we get a bunch of baseline stats. Roid Rampage, Retrograde. Some of these descriptions are pretty funny. I'm going to be honest with you, Lucky Bastard. You never called yourself lucky. People who witnessed you juggling chainsaws while crossing a minefield did it for you. <laughs> some of these little descriptions for these abilities are pretty humorous. They got me giggling. They got me giggling a little bit. So apparently there's a, a copious helping of, of humor in this one. Uh, all of these seem to have like pretty bad consequences. Like they all make you very like they all every single one of these gives you a clearly defined role that you are the best at. But in return, they take something from you. So I don't know if these are mandatory and we have to take them. But for right now, let's just allocate things. Uh, I wanted to be personable. I wanted to have an attention to detail. I wanted to be like, I don't know. Maybe we'll go. We could be lucky. That might not be too bad. Apparently, I'm the life of the party. I could be a rock star. Oh, I love how it gives you like a little... I, I love how it gives you a relational reckoning for each of your skill levels. So we are very attentive, whereas at level 8, we would be like a sniper. Okay. Uh, let's go with... Yeah, we can be like a dance instructor. I'll go with a little bit of extra. We'll be an entertainer. We'll be a personality right there. So with our skills, what do we want to take? We've had 230 points we can play around with. I would like to go, let's go maybe like, we'll go 50 in pistols. That sounds all right. Then maybe we'll go, we definitely want to have some speech craft. So we'll put like 70 maybe into speech craft. Bartering, we probably want to have like a little bit of that right there. So we'll go like 55. I don't really care about gambling. Maybe we'll go with like a little bit of survival right there. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll go with like a little bit of first aid. We can go with some stealth, but I don't, that's what I want right there. We'll put in like 60 points into lock picking. That's what I'm looking for. I don't really care about pickpocketing. We'll take that up to like 50. We'll take this up to like 50. And now we've got like 60 points to throw around with the stuff that we want to be able to do. I, I think that throwing another 10 into speechcraft is not a bad idea. I think that throwing another 10 into pistols is probably not a bad idea. Uh, we can more than likely throw like five into melee weapons just in case to help us out in the early game possibly. And then I wanted to throw stuff into like assault rifles and machine guns. But we'll probably get points we can allocate later so that may not be that important for now. Yeah, let's just put a little bit more in right there. And we'll put the remaining six points into like pistols. That sounds good. Like I'm pretty happy we're like kind of a social guy but we got a little bit of combat skills. Like some very light thiefy skills. I can live with it. I don't really want to take any of these. These all seem a little too gambly for me, even though some of them are hilarious. 
Uh, let's see here. So we can go with our game mode. Easy. Uh, we'll go with the normal mode. That sounds good. I've got no talents allocated, which it seems to be really upset about. Oh, that's what it's talking about. Okay, well, let's go pistols and SMG for a second. So we've got Breteur. When two people shoot at one another using pistols, the most experienced one always wins. So we get 5% accuracy when we do aim shots from a pistol as a one-time permanent bonus, and plus one to damage when shooting from a pistol for every second level until the bonus reaches 15%. Talent works retroactively as if taken on the first level. Or we can take Submachine Gun Fan. I'll go with that. That sounds alright. So do I put more points into it? Oh, okay. So it's just like it levels up. And we've got Headhunter over there. What survival skills do we have? We have Plot Armor. You get plus 1% to avoid knockdown for every level until the bonus reaches 20%. Okay. And then we've got Feldsher, the ability to max out healing effects of drugs available. We get a healing bonus. I'll take that. That sounds good. We've got Deep Pockets, which apparently gives us higher carrying weight and gives us more HP. Okay. Every level we get one kilogram and one weight. We can get Exercise as well, which is going to give us resistance, I guess. Okay. We can get Oaken Skin. Yeah, let's go with Oaken Skin. Why not? Can I take all of these? These all seem pretty rad. So if I can take multiples of them, I see no reason not to. As far as tinkering goes, I don't think I took very much tinkering. Plus one skill point for every level. Very nice. I'll definitely take that. And then we can lower the chance to break items when we craft, so that sounds pretty good. Nice. Okay. Okay. And then gold rules the world. We get a 10% discount when trading. Yeah, go for it. The crafter's corner coat. We have so many points, man. I don't know where all these points are coming from, but we got a lot of points right now. So I took a whole bunch of stuff in here. I mean, honestly, going through all of it, I, I've, the character creation is actually fairly in-depth. And so, like, I got a lot of the stuff in here. All right, that's all you really need to know. Uh, but anyways, I've only got a few points left for us to fiddle with. Apparently, common poison no longer gets man all of these are really really good like every single one of these talents is like solid like they all roundly do good stuff which i'm pleased to see uh when i mean it's hard to get more information about it sure why not i'll learn that and then we've got plate master when you're wearing armor nothing can hurt you huh all right well i took just about everything for pistols because some of them were really good in there there are a whole bunch of tinkering skills that we could take so, you know, there's things around, but I don't see anything that I really wanted to grab thus far. So we can get double skill from books. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds good. All right, so we'll go to the normal difficulty level. Let's dive on in. Attention, Major. Everything you are about to hear is highly classified. We choose you for this briefing due to your activities in the Central Waste two years ago. The information about the asteroid you delivered upon return from Krasnoznamenny greatly agitated the Central Command. Our science teams did not reach a solid conclusion, but all of them agreed that the potential impact of the asteroid would be devastating to all life in the wastes. This is why Central Command organized a special research group with the goals of studying the nature of the problem and finding possible solutions. For the last one and a half years, the best minds of Atom worked on this problem. Now it seems that, despite the current state of science and technology in the wastes, a solution has been reached. East of the Central Waste and our base of operations, there is a city called Trudograd. Once it was home to a special strategic manufacturing facility the inverter factory, which was ran by a certain Professor Goryachev. As you know, Trudograd survived the war much better than most cities and towns of our motherland. Thus, it is possible that the facility still stands or even operates protected by the city walls. This facility is very important to our cause. Before the war, it was used to manufacture an experimental electromagnetic propulsion device, the RR-1 railgun. 
According to top secret documents we uncovered during our research, this invention of Professor Goryachev was able to deliver special polymer-based projectiles straight into Earth's orbit, or even further into outer space at tremendous speeds. If this information can be trusted, this device might just happen to be humanity's sole chance at destroying the asteroid before impact. Your mission is to venture into Trudograd, find Professor Goryachev and scout out the inverter facility for any traces of the OR-R1 railgun. If the propulsion device will be found, we will take it from there, securing and transporting it to HQ for further study and usage against the asteroid maze. Good luck, Major, and let there be Atom. Everything seems so much more pers purposeful now that I know I'm about to be wiped out by a bolide from space. Bolide is just a fancy word for something flying through space. That's all you really need to know. Bolide is just a really, really fancy word for a rock going really fast in space. That's it, a bolide. You're sitting in a small clearing in front of a blazing campfire. The autumn forest surrounds you and it creaks peacefully in the dead of night. The air hangs heavy with the promise of snow and the beginning of winter. The fire crackles softly with the branches that you feed it, enchanted by the darting, dancing flames. Crackling wood and the hiss of boiling sap are the only sounds in your tiny campsite. With a sigh, you stretch your back and gaze over at your surprised guest. He's a short fellow, hunchbacked and raggedly dressed. He emerged from the tall trees about an hour ago and asked if he could warm his bones by the fire. Surprisingly, you disregarded your hard-earned knowledge of the wastes, and agreed. Now, he's sitting on the opposite side of the fire, his face hidden in the shadows of a hood. His silence is unnerving. You begin to regret allowing the stranger into your camp. Maybe saying something would help ease the tension? Let's offer him a snacky bar. Everybody loves a snacky bar. The stranger raises his head and looks at you through the flames. At least, it feels as if he's looking at you. His face is still obscured by shadows. No, thank you. I'm not hungry, he says in a calm and surprisingly soothing voice. A moment later, he asks, Did you come here from far away? Yup. Yeah. As it does to us all. The man is quiet again, but then throws a dry stick into the flames. Sparks fly up like a cloud of fireflies into the cold heavens as he asks, Did you hear what happened in Krasna's nominee? It's a city to the west of here. You feel a strange urge to tell him the truth. Who knows why? Perhaps telling someone about your adventures will make them more real. Maybe even grant them some kind of meaning. That's a really... I was sorry, I was stunned by how hard it is to say the name of that city. Krasnoznameni. Alright, that's Krasnoznameni. Didn't you guys know? Alright. Eh, let's see here. I've heard the saying, how much suffering can one world endure? Makes my heart ache to think of it. The stranger tugs at his cowl and sinks down into his ragged clothes. I suppose, with a turn of events like these, Dan's factory gang and that sweet little village of Atradnoe are also doomed. He shivers slightly. Silence reigns again for a while, until a wolf's howl in the distance causes you to look around frantically. Danger lurks in every corner of the wastes, and it pays to be cautious. Why, then, did you so calmly choose to share your campfire with this odd fellow, a man you know nothing about? As if reading your unsettling thoughts, the stranger speaks again. And what happened with that trading hub, Paragon? Do you know? So what it's doing right now is it's effectively parsing the way that you played the first game and the decisions that you made while you were playing through the first game so that there's continuity. I don't know if the game allows you to directly import your character from the previous game. But anyways, this is all stuff that happened in the first game. It's going to be like, I'm a little bit lost too. It's been a really long time since I played Adam RPG. So anyways. Glad to hear not all is lost in that corner of the wastes. The man stretches his arms up as if to pluck a low-hanging star. Tell me, who did you share your travels with back then? I know it's kind of a personal question, but indulge me, please. The man nods and again gazes down into the fire. You take a drink from your water flask and hold it out to share. He shakes his head no. Five hard minutes of silence follow until you've had your fill of waiting and guessing. You lean forward, 
focus exactly on the darkness within the man's cowl, and in a stern voice, ask. He's gonna take his hood off and it's gonna be me with a shocking look on my face. Like, you know, in like Beauty and the Beast, when the beast turns back into like the prince at the end and he gives you that really, really weird look like straight at the camera. That's how it's gonna be me looking at me with that look on my face. Over the years, people have given me many different names. Your guest states without emotion. But isn't it true that names, like other words, have no intrinsic meaning? Words are senseless, unless living people recall them and give them purpose. Thus, when we meet again, I will once more become nameless. Nah. Of its own accord, your companion's hood slides limply away. But its absence reveals not a human head, but a glowing, undulating sphere of crimson fire. A deadly star. You yelp aloud, for a moment willing yourself to run, but already the night has vanished, dissolved in the haunting red glow. Never again shall you be able to hide from the invisible gaze of your nightmarish guest. That gaze is cruel and indifferent, and the lands it oversees are barren, burnt down to nothing but ashes and splinters of stone. You are so entranced by the endless landscape of utter obliteration that at first you do not notice how your own body has started burning. You are ablaze on the inside, like a bunch of cinders twisted into human form. And the wild, frigid winds scatter your ashes across the surface of the dead earth. That's unpleasant. I thought I was going to have a nice, amicable conversation with an asteroid, and instead I got burned up in soul flames. On the plus side, I got that's a pretty dope jacket right there. We got like a Wolverine jacket. We got an incoming transmission. You make you take out the portable radio you were given back at base. Don the earpiece and turn the dial. It sounds like HQ calling to confirm you made it into the city. Come in. God damn it! Can you hear me? This is Leonid. I hear you loud and clear. This is Vasily, the communication specialist. What the uh? <laughs> Static. All right, now it's working. This is communication specialist Vasily, 2104. You read me over. Loud and clear. We have contact. Hey there, Leonid. How's it going? You intruder grad yet? Over. Yep. I'm um, here. Instead of a reply, the radio produces another storm of white noise. You take the earpiece out and listen at a distance. It dies down and you get a few more words from HQ. Not gonna lie, I couldn't make out any of that, but I hope you're doing great. Be careful out there, alright? Nobody can look at Krasnoznamini. 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 Without tearing up after what you did to it. Please don't destroy True to Grad 2, okay? Over. Apparently, I destroyed an entire city because I'm a badass like that. Apparently, I've taken a duffel bag. Let's take a look around. The graphics definitely look a lot... Ooh, there's my hat right there. Definitely gonna need that. Absolutely gonna take that with me. What do we got right there? An empty... Bo Damn, I thought it was gonna be like free beer. What did I do? I need to pick this lock in order to grab a key for another lock. Fantastic. Alright, so we left click on it, we hold, and we can unlock it right there. Dunzos. Ooh, this is a closet full of fun. Okay. Let's see here, we got Hesperus Star Phenomenon. Alright, that's good to know. And then we've also got ourselves what looks like a room key, so I'll take all, yeah, just take all of it. Every last bit of it. I want everything. Alright, so let's go to our inventory, which if I recall is right there, and I will go, ba ba put that right there. Alright, do I have to lock and load it or anything, or does it just do that on its own? Alright, so for right now, we're rocking out with our gun. We got our pistola ready to go. A little Makarov action rocking. Can I zoom out a little bit? I got the key, now I need to hold it in my, you don't need to hold it in your hand, just unlock the damn thing. I gave you like a thousand points of lock picking. Just do it. <laughs> like we literally do not need that key. That key is irrelevant to us. Uh, can I run? Yeah, let's run. I remember being able to run in this game, so I want to run. What's up with this room right here? We got 23 rubles and a rope. I'll take it. What else is in here? We got like a book. Take that too, just in case it's like a skill book or something. You never know. All right, so what's going on over here? We got ourselves a bar where apparently nobody ever uses a broom. You come to the innkeeper who's busy at the bar. Yesterday you were too tired to talk to him much, but now that you're so well rested, why not? He smiles at you and says in a pleasing tone, 
Hello, comrade. How did you sleep? I hope the bed bugs did not bite. Uh, they did. They did. A rictus grin appears on the man's face and flails his arm into the air and shakes his head. A thousand apologies. I will ask the staff to exchange your sheets this instant. This is embarrassing. I thought I got rid of basket things. Suddenly he smacks himself on the forehead as if remembering something. You should not worry about big bugs no more, I swear. But I want to warn you about something. When you decide to go to sleep the other day, a certain man, he asks about you. Okay, so what did he ask? Nothing special. Wanted to know whether I knew you from somewhere. I told him it was your first time. Visiting our establishment and maybe see to yourself. Seems like your equipment and stature attracted him. Well, no, seasoned adventurers, they are rare in these parts. Alright. Can you tell me where he is? Fred, no. I saw him a couple times on outskirts, but uh, Fred did not come here very often. Okay. Now, let's see here. Would you like food or drink, or maybe a souvenir? Ooh, he has souvenirs. What kind of souvenirs do we have? It looks like we have... Medallions with views of the city. Do they sell well? Like hotcakes, huh? All right. Uh, now I'm not super. I wanna. I wanna go like do something. Looks like we've started out. Oh wow, the environment looks good. I really like the way the city appears. Let's go search some of these other rooms for anything I can steal because I'm a jerk like that. Anything inside of here? Like, obviously, a hallmark of RPGs is can I steal everything that isn't nailed down? Like, that's pretty much what I live for in games like this. Is that person going to be mad that I'm in here? I mean, I don't see any kind of indicator that I'm committing a crime, so you know what? Let's not worry about it. There's an old boot! Fantastic. Well, at least we didn't get it from fishing, because that would have just been a cliche. We've also got waste paper. Suppose I'll take it. Why not? You never know. The first game had a pretty big crafting system. And like it was never it was never quite sure what you were going to need in order to get stuff done. Now, there's people in there, so I'll probably resist the urge of robbing it. Just feels unnecessary, you know, when there's bystanders. What is that? A Svinchatka? A variant on brass knuckles. With smooth finger holes designed for striking down on the top of the head. Ow, dude. So it's basically like a lump of lead you hold in your hand, and then you just, like, monkey punch somebody with it? Ugh. I have never heard of that in my life, but it sounds unpleasant. I'll give it that. Uh, I forgot to put on my hat. There we go. I gotta put on I gotta put on the old Ushanka. We gotta get into the theme of things here. Who wants to play Stalker or any other Russian post-apocalypse game without throwing on a Ushanka? You know, you gotta have one. Magnifying lens, wires, compact cassette tape. Okay, I'll take all of it. I don't even know what I can carry right now, but I'm just super busy stealing everything on Earth. Did I see armor in there? I feel like I saw armor in there. A steel breastplate. All right, yeah, sure. Why not? I'll take it. We've got some super glue. I don't know if I need the AK, nor do I think that I'm strong enough to utilize the AK. Dude, I can rob the innkeeper. That's kind of an asshole -ish move while he's sharing his home with me, but you know what? I think that's exactly the kind of depravity that I'm willing to stoop to. Let's go for it. Uh, a couple of shotgun shells. No clothing, no undies, no socks. Just four bullets. Alright, nobody knew that I was here. Nobody's upset with me. Nobody knows that I'm a thief. We just do what we want to do, and we live with the consequences later. Let's go outside. I'm assuming somebody's going to walk up and be like, Sir, sir! I recognize you, and then they're going to tell us to come do something, because it's an RPG, and that's what always happens. No? Well, color me surprised, my friends. Color me surprised. I don't see anything lootable in here. Well, there's a bit of wood right there, and a bottle, but I don't think that that's immediately important to our adventure. There's shack over there. I don't think we're going to do it. I, I do wish I could zoom out a little bit further. I'm a big, like, maximum zoom guy. Uh, who are you? What's up, what, what's up with you, and what do you do? A sweaty, apple-cheeked man is staring at a magician performing tricks in the street. Anticipating that you're about to speak, he turns and says, What do you want? I'm kind of busy here, so make it snappy. What you looking at? The show, what else? Come on now. Something else is bothering you. Tell me. 
He opens his mouth as if to answer, but shakes his head and mumbles. There's nothing bothering me. Damn, look. I'll tell you later if the timing's right, okay? Alright, sure, man. Apparently, I'm not as good at speech craft as I thought I was. The mysterious gray-haired man is skillfully juggling an entire deck's worth of cards in the air. The trick is so beautifully executed that it leaves you stunned. As you come closer, he shoots you a piercing look and assembles his cards back into the deck. Then, without looking, draws four. He shows you they're all tens and pats his pocket. Mute Trickster is clearly telling you to show you a special trick for rubles. I don't have any money, so... I don't even have food right now, so I think I'm going to resist the urge to give up my hard-won rubles that I stole from another guy. There's a cozy campfire. We could make some food here if we wanted to. Okay. I don't have any canned food, I don't think, do I? What do I have in my inventory right now? I have an antidote, so I have a big jar of red serum just in case. Toilet paper, I can wipe my ass. That's more than my local supermarket has, so I'll take it. Apparently the post-apocalypse is better stocked than real life. Go figure. Isn't there anyone who can help us? I shall help you, pink-clad madam! A blue-eyed woman is pacing in a short circuit, cooing softly to a baby that she's holding to her chest. Having noticed or rather sensed your presence, she squints and smiles with a poorly concealed anger. What are you looking at? Are you a crook sent by his so-called father to harass me? Nobody sent me. What are you talking about? The woman is so surprised by your question that she almost drops the baby. At the very last moment, she recovers the fumble and pulls him back. The baby doesn't react. Uh-oh, he's dead. You don't know? You don't know anything about this rat fornicator or any of the corrupt officials protecting him? So you're probably wondering why a breastfeeding mother is sitting in the dirt outside the city gates while her son's so-called father is living a life of obscene luxury behind the blood-stained walls, huh? Ah, uh, sure. Save me the drama. She pulls a fat, hand-rolled cigarette from her pocket and lights it up while awkwardly clutching the baby. She's blowing smoke right into the baby's face, but it remains silent as she continues the story. In short, Vasilkov B.Y., a chimney sweep from the scrap quarter, lied and tricked me into having sexual inner... He, so you slipped and he fell, is what you're telling me here. Fair enough. Um, and now that I have a son, that mother flipper refuses to help me. Instead, he's spending my son's birthright bribing the cops so they won't let us into the city. Let me look at this baby here. You examine the wrapped bundle in her arms and realize it's not a baby at all. She's got an oblong turnip with a smiley face carved in it. Uh, so that's not a baby, it's a turnip. She lets out a shriek and snuggles the vegetable closer to her bosom. He's a real boy, my sweet little boy, the fruit of my body, the sin of my soul. My love child with that reprobate Vasil cough, and one day this whole damn city is going to admit it. Fruit, don't you mean vegetable? Kazing, bye! Well, we solved that problem, so that's pretty cool. We've only been here for like an eighth of a second. And we've already, we've already, oh my goodness gracious! I didn't see the large red signs that said, caution. And now, my arm is a wibbling mass of goo. I don't think I did make an impact on this world, not in the same way that that landmine made an impact on my face. So here's a fun fact to know about landmines, they really, really hurt. Not just, like, not just physically, but emotionally. I felt like it took an unnecessary risk with my life. It stung. Also, you need to save a lot more. Um, you know. Like, this game is a classic RPG. If you don't save, it's not going to save for you. It took me all the way back to my character creation. Alright. Like, right when I woke up out of bed. Alright, so this time around, I pretended... I, I got the check. I got the skill check. But I pretended not to notice that her baby was a turnip so that she would tell me who to go talk to. And as it turns out, she's got a quest. So, you know. When I walked away before, I could have just failed that quest. There was no way to know. And now we've got a quest. So we've got a holy thing. A turnip baby to investigate. Hello, comrade. Let's see here. He smiles sheepishly as if just trying to decide what to expect. Friendly conversation or a mean-spirited sucker punch? What's the story, Morning Glory? Why the long face, man? Eh, things haven't been working out lately. And the reason behind it is I'm stupid and ashamed to even mention it. All right. Tell me your problem, maybe I can help. Well, when I came to Trudegrad, I had a small fortune. The nature of it was a little unusual, but still. Um, I had a jar of gold teeth. Those little beauties were useful in all kinds of situations, like to pay off a bar tab, or as bribes, or, you know, corrupt officials. Kept it in my tent, but then, you know, I got drunk and hid it, and now I can't find it. Okay, so where'd you hide it? Out in the minefield? Oh my goodness gracious. 
Drunk me thought they'd be safe out there. I don't know how I survived the walk there and back, the proverbial drunkard's luck, I guess, but now I'm too scared to go get it again, and I don't want to test the old liquid courage twice in a row. Maybe you can help me out. You're an adventurer. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Exit the main gate and take a quick right. The minefield is at the foot of the wall on this side. Yeah, I found it already. I, uh, I definitely, I definitely located it already, in case you were wondering. So I wonder if attention is how I see the landmines. I don't really even see where it might possibly be. There's no, like, interactable spots over there. Minefield, I should watch my step. Yeah, I don't see anything that indicates a mine is in the area, though. That's the concerning part. Maybe I can go around up here and, like, sneak my way in. Maybe. But even so, how badly do I want to get blown up for a set of teeth? Oh, they put a landmine in front of the caution sign. So, like, I'm going to go head out on a limb and say that, like, we're probably not going to find these teeth. There's, like, nothing interactable in here either. That's the other concerning part is if you hold down alt, everything lootable turns green. So there's, like, nothing to really loot inside of here. I think the game is just kind of being a dick. Like, I think it's trying to murder us is my best guess. Like, if I had to hazard and just, like, kind of be like, hey, are you trying to kill me? I think the answer would be yes. So anyways, uh, we can check our journal or whatever. Maybe see if there's something going on inside of there. That's our save load menu. Where the hell is our journal at? It's the J key. Who would have known? I mean, he said he hid it over here, but maybe we need, like, special magic mind shoes. So I'm not, like, crazy positive I want to keep throwing myself at that challenge right there. I'm sure there's like a catch or there's some kind of maybe if I get drunk I'll be better at it just like he was I don't know what the humor is like in this game But that would be my first start is maybe to buy a bottle of liquor and get super ripped and just see if I can do it The gray-haired but hardy fellow in his 50s is staring angrily at the parking lot guard who looks nonplussed Turning to you he tiredly pinches the bridge of his nose Can't believe what I'm seeing the enemy of justice wants to stand in the way of a man getting even with his son's murderer What happened? He grimaces and gestures to the fence around the parking lot. See that expensively dressed creep standing near the large track with the bodyguard? That's Genia of the merchant, all around sick fuck. A month ago, I wait to deliver to, uh, on his way to deliver goods to the city, he crossed paths with my son Vitya, who was walking along the road to pick berries by the swamp. He ran him over, huh? He did. It was a stretch of road, but that piece of shit jerked the wheel at the right moment. I keep seeing Vidya's body bent or body flying through the air and rolling over and over as it hit the ground. He killed my son for no good reason at all, the beast. I know he would go away scot-free in this city of corruption. All right, so, and why aren't you allowed in there? Because last time I came this close to tearing the beast behind the fence to pieces. Calm down. Where do you think you are? This is a decent city full of decent people. Full of decency. Decency, my hairy ass. Lawlessness is what it is. Far more so than up north. You cover up for murderers. All right, so what are you going to do now? couple of ideas, but let's discuss them in my room at the hotel. I don't want to talk in front of this lick spittle. Alright, so we gotta go to the hotel? Sounds good. Uh, we're Wow, we're already at like 40-something minutes right now. I really want to play more, but let me know what you think down below. Maybe we'll do another episode. My name is Splattercat. This is Trudograd, the sequel to Adam RPG. We're just getting started, but hey, I can do more if you want me to. I'll see y'all next time. Thank you for being here. Make sure you leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Aside from that, also check out the links down below for the Twitch channel where I'm live every single day of the week and the Discord where the community hangs out. That's all I got for you today. Goodbye, everybody.